so the box started off very well. And uh, we are up to 17 points to nil. And yet still managed to lose from that position due to complacency. And I think complacency is going to be the biggest challenge for the squad. Because they're a side that can be any team in the world. But tonight we saw that there is that sort of uh, that sort of that 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 possibility that if we switch off and we don't play at full eighty minutes performance, we can be beaten by teams. You know, we we almost came short against New Zealand, took re two really big performances to beat them, and uh, life was really good. And now we've been brought crashing back to reality because we've made some changes and we've lost. And that's now going to be the narrative for the next few weeks, really, isn't it? It's going to be about well, maybe we don't have the depth. It's always it's always a funny conversation because. As soon as we win, it's all about this phenomenal depth. You know, we name the side on Tuesday and everyone's like, look at this depth we've got. And then we lose on the Saturday and all of a sudden everyone's saying, well, we don't have the depth. Maybe we don't have, you know, the quality of players we do. And you don't want to get too, um, you know, negative about a, about a one-point loss against an Argentina side who I think is actually really good. You know, I, I mean, the fact that they lost to Australia a couple of weeks ago, I thought that was mind-numbing when they did. But today, they were, they were worth their salt. They really were. You know, it was a position where they went down early, like they did against Australia, and then came back up and hit us hard. And we didn't really know what to do with it. You know, we were kind of sort of deer in headlights for a while. And I think that's that's a very big thing we need to try and overcome. And you know, there's going to be a lot of question marks, a lot, a lot of selections, in terms of players who have been given a couple of chances, maybe haven't quite delivered and when do you start to 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 say, right, well, maybe it's just not going to happen? Because we've now rotated a couple of times, and some of the players who have been in those rotations continue to get chances and not really take them. So it's going to become a bit of a crunch time with Rusty Erasmus because he's only got a certain amount of tests between now and 2027. He keeps talking about 2027. You know, we could have sent a stronger side. We could have sent a Peter Steph, the toy, a Bongi Manambi, a, a uh, Damon Delendi, a Cheslin Colby, you know, you could have sent some of those key players over there. Um, you could have played Sia Khaleesi, he was over there in the stands. But we didn't. We rotated, and he always talks about 2027 as the reason for that rotation. The problem comes when you lose, and if these players don't play well, what do you then do? Do you Are you looking at these players and thinking, no, you know what, this player is going to be fine come 20 tests? Can you afford to give him 20 tests? Because... While you're playing them, you're denying opportunity to other players. So it becomes a very interesting balancing act in terms of giving players chances, getting that experience into players that you have now sort of decided. And they've got a pretty big group of 55 players. You've got to decide where you give these tests to. Where are you giving the next 30, 40 tests? We've got about 12 a year. We, we, I think this was number eight or number nine, I think it is, of, uh, of 12 for the year. So... We'll probably have another 12 next year, um, another 12 after that, so it's 24. And then we're into World Cup, yeah, where you're probably only going to have about six maybe before the World Cup. So we've got about 30 tests, I reckon, between here and 2027. And that is why, you know, Rassi Rasmus is very quick to try and rotate, try and find spaces to play these players in. Because he always talks about wanting to get 20 to 30 tests into players going into a major tournament. And that's going to be a major talking point now. You know, someone like Salman Murat, for example, he's under a lot of pressure, didn't have a great game today. And he's now sitting on seven, eight tests. Now, do you keep giving him those tests in the hope that he's going to turn things around? We are now seeing a bit of a lock crisis. Nico Janssen van Rensburg, for example, has been called into the squad, has not been given a single minute. Does he not get an opportunity in Mbele? If he takes it, what do you do then? Uh, ben Jason Dixon, I really highly rate. I think he will be a good springbok. I think he's actually playing well, well tonight. But he's another one who hasn't maybe smashed the door down just yet. And there's also big discussions to be had about current players who maybe it's a discussion, are they going to make the next World Cup? Should they make the next World Cup? And uh, I think somebody like Kubis Ryan today, I don't think had his best game. He scored a really good try. But from the way he controlled the game, you know, I didn't think was was fantastic. And it's an, another interesting one. We've got so many scrum halves. You're looking to bring Mourne Funnenberg in, for example. Jaden Henson, Grant Williams, they're still pretty young in their test careers. Faf de Klerk currently injured means you have to give other people a chance. But, you know, do you start to look at Corbis Ryan and decide, well, if he's not going to make the next World Cup, we can't afford to give them test matches. And 
that's what I think is going to be the most interesting thing over the next few years is where do you draw the line between your best players, your players for the future, and uh, winning things? You know, I, I, we will win the rugby championship. I'm pretty pretty certain about that. We're sitting on 19 points, Archie on 14. They're five points behind us. We've still got about a 58-point advantage on them from a points difference point of view. You know, so we're looking pretty good to win the rugby championship. We're going to go to Immobile next week. We've got a really good... Uh, record there so i'm not worried about losing the rugby championship i i think we will wrap it up but it's and i don't want to get too negative about one loss either and i think that you know it's a disservice to say that this is not a team we should never lose to because argentina are good they are a good side there's no doubt about that and uh, what i feel for is Marty Leibach, who's going to get the brunt of the criticism because he you know he missed a kick but at the end of the day you know, I mentioned a couple of players. He's going to be a player that they're now going to have to have the conversation about. You know, they're going to sit there saying, we desperately want this guy to succeed, but it's just not quite happening. And at what point do you pull the plug on on the experiment? You know, at what point do you sit there saying, this isn't working and we have to make a change? Satsuma Gomezulu was back to hell of him. And a lot of people, including me, have been saying, I still think he's got a lot to give. But when he comes on like today and he misses a penalty where he shouldn't be missing, then all of a sudden you've got to have these 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 just kind of discussions. Um, so if you look at the game, for example, it, it really did ebb and flow because we raced ahead. Uh, 12 minutes in, we were 17-0 up. We then continue to try as Santiago Carreras goes over, or Matteo Carreras rather, in the 14 minutes and Thomas Albanor's adds the extras, and that was a bit of a wake-up call on how dangerous they can be. Kurt Lawrence then gets the yellow card, and they then go try Pando Matera in the 21st minute, try Thomas Albanoz in the 34th minute. Kurt Lawrence left the field at 17-7. He came onto the field at 26-17. So that yellow card made a massive difference. Thankfully for the box, Kubis Reinhardt was scored a try just for half time to just make it a little bit less, um, make it look a little bit more acceptable, really, with a four-point lead. And the second half, the only uh, points were two penalties in the box, one for Pollard in the 43rd minute, one from Lidlock in the 50th, and then one for Thomas Albanors. And the bomb squad worked from a scrum perspective, but we didn't suddenly have this massive dominance where we were winning penalty after penalty, breakdown after breakdown. And I think Archie did very well to, to neutralize us, but I also just don't think we were quite at our best. So, you know, in terms of some of the stats, it always tells an interesting story, but... Possession, for example, 40-60. More possession. We don't often have more possession and more territory. If we look at our attack, post-contact meters, very similar. We had more line breaks, almost twice as many ball carries, more passes, uh, more turnovers won. You see a few penalties despite the yellow card. Tackle completion was 74%. I thought tackling today was pretty poor. And I think tackle completion percentage is a bit of an outdated stat because we are looking at you know, defensive system that which where you have missed tackles, but I thought junior tackling wasn't very good. And that needs to be addressed. You know, the defense wasn't very good. Maybe that's probably a better way of saying it. it's not just about the tackling, but the defense wasn't very good. And I think the sad thing is I, I sit there thinking who had a standout game. And I think so many players Oxen Chair had a standout game. I think that's probably who I can go stacking. Oxen Chair had a standout game. Etzibet was good when he came on can't really think of anybody else who was fantastic. I played a fast, blue, hot and cold. You know, I thought he had some really nice touches, some really poor touches. The kind of Amsimile as well. Uh, I thought he generally had a very good game. Jesse Creel generally had an all-right game and also made a couple of mistakes. And it's a weird situation to be in when I can't think of too many Springboks who were really, really good and, and at the top of their game. And that, I think, is probably the biggest worry is that we haven't had a performance like that in a while. Now, we don't need to panic just yet because we've got time. We'll... We'll probably bounce back next week. We'll win the rugby championship and life will all be good. But it does throw a bit of a warning out there just to be very cognizant that complacency is dangerous. And, uh, you know, we know Rassi Rasmus will, spill, will, 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 will spill, spin this and he will use this to sit there and say, you guys are not unbeatable. You've just been beaten by Argentina who are... We've just lost the number one in the world, I think, actually, if I'm not mistaken, with regards to the, the, the player ratings. I mean, player ratings, the world ranking. So I think we just lost the number one ranking. And that'll be a bit of a sucker blow to, to the guys. And maybe that's what you need every now and again. You know, you go and beat all, the All Blacks twice in a row and you're thinking, fantastic, you know, untouchable. You go to Argentina and look, it wasn't, it was rotated, 
But there was a lot of World Cup winners in that side, you know? It, it wasn't an outrageously young side. It wasn't the side we played against Portugal, for example. And we lost. So it's a warning sign. And I'm a panicking. I'm upset. I'm a bleak. I mean, I've stayed up at quarter past one in the morning. And I've just watched the box lose. After watching the Lions lose the Curry Cup, I'm also a Manchester United fan and we drew. I'm also a Ferrari fan and we were terrible in qualifying. So I've had a really bad sporting day. And it's late at night. So I'm not panicking about the box. But I just think this is a timely reminder that we, you know, any team can beat us. And hopefully that will then kind of sort of click a gear. And, and maybe some big decisions need to be made in terms of some players who are on the fringes getting opportunities and not quite taking them. What do you think? You know, which of these players do you think, which of the players do you think for tonight where you think will be in, in on the plane? Because I think they're going directly to the airport. Which of these players will be sitting on the plane going, I'm in, I'm in trouble here. I'm not sure I'm, you know, sold in, in the squad. You know, let me know in the comments below.